Hello grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on valence and valency. Let's use oxygen as our first example. We join Diyasha as she reminds us about oxygen structure. For oxygen, the number of electrons in the outer energy level is 6. This means oxygen has 6 valence electrons. And if you look for oxygen on the periodic table, you will find it in group 6. So the number of valence electrons is the same as the group number. Now, have another look at the energy level diagram of oxygen. What do you notice about these orbitals? Can you see that each have only one electron? These orbitals are only half filled. Half filled means that an orbital has only one electron. That means that oxygen requires two more electrons before the second energy level is filled. Now it is very important to note that only the noble gases of group 8 have filled outer energy levels. These gases are all very stable and do not react to form compounds. In 1916, a chemist named Gilbert Lewis used this property of noble gases to explain why other elements react to form compounds. He explained that when atoms react, they collide with each other. When they collide, their outermost electrons interact. If they form bonds with each other, it is these outermost electrons, called the valence electrons, which will be involved in the bonds. This theory of chemical bonding is called the valence bond theory. The arrangement of the valence electrons in any atom will determine what sort of chemical bond forms. There are three possible ways these valence electrons can interact. When certain atoms come together, they will either give away electrons, take on extra electrons, or share electrons in order to fill their outer energy levels. In this way, atoms become stable just like the noble gases. Of course, this change must use as little energy as possible. Let's look at the energy level diagram for oxygen again. Do you see that the first energy level is filled, but the second energy level is not? The second level has room for 8 electrons, but there are only 6 electrons here. So oxygen needs another 2 electrons to fill the outer energy level. It's easier to take on 2 electrons than to give away 6 electrons. Now, listen very carefully. Because there are 6 electrons in the outer level, we say that oxygen has 6 valence electrons. But, because another 2 electrons are needed to fill the outer level, we say that oxygen has a valency of 2. In the same way, all elements in group 6 will have 6 valence electrons and a valency of 2. Now, do you see that by adding 2 electrons to the oxygen atom, it will now have 10 electrons, which is the same as the neon atom, a noble gas. The second, or outer energy level, is now filled. It has the nucleus of an oxygen atom, but the electron energy diagram looks the same as that of the neon atom. Oxygen now has a stable electron configuration. But now there are two more electrons in the atom than protons. The atom has a negative charge of minus 2 and is called an ion. Thanks, Diyasha. Before we go on to other examples, let's look at how Lewis drew the structure of oxygen. Lewis diagrams are also called Lewis dot diagrams. We write the atom's symbol and then draw dots or crosses around the symbol to represent only the valence electrons of that atom. We know that oxygen has six valence electrons. Four of these are paired and two are unpaired. In the Lewis dot diagram, we draw these six valence electrons in groups around oxygen symbol O, four paired and two unpaired. We can see there are two gaps which need to be filled for oxygen to have a noble gas structure. Oxygen's valency is two. Oxygen may gain two electrons to form the oxide ion, or oxygen may share these two electrons in two covalent bonds. We can represent the oxide ion in the Lewis dot diagram like this, or maybe like this. It doesn't matter whether we use dots or crosses and which colors we use, as long as our diagram is clear. 
This is the water molecule in the Lewis dot diagram. Water is an example of a molecule in which oxygen shares two electrons. Let's join Diasha again as she looks at another example, potassium. The atomic number tells us that a potassium atom has 19 electrons. Why don't you draw the energy diagram of potassium? Now compare your answer to mine. What do you notice about the outer energy level, number 4? Yes, it has only one valence electron. The potassium atom has a choice. It can either give this one electron away and have a full third outer energy level, just like the noble gas argon, or it must gain 17 electrons to become like the noble gas, krypton. What would be easier? Of course, the first option makes more sense. This means that potassium has a valency of 1. When potassium gives its one valence electron away, it will only have 18 electrons. The atom has the nucleus of a potassium atom, but the electron distribution of argon, a noble gas, which has all three of its energy levels filled. Now it has 19 protons, but only 18 electrons, so it has a positive charge of plus 1. The potassium atom is no longer neutral, and so it is called an iron. Here is the Lewis dot diagram for potassium. Potassium has one valence electron and a valency of one. Let's use aluminium as our next example. Aluminium is in group three, so it has three valence electrons. Why do we arrange these electrons like this? Two paired and one not paired. And can you see what aluminium's valency is? Let's join Diasha again to see the answers to these questions. Aluminium's atomic number is 13, and it is found in group 3. This means that it has three valence electrons. If you look at the energy level diagram, do you notice the two empty and one half filled orbitals? So what must the aluminium atom do to fill this level up? Yes, it can either accept five electrons to fill up the outer energy level, or the three valence electrons can be donated to another atom, and the second energy level will be full. So what will be easier, to go and look for five electrons, or to give away three electrons? Of course, it will be much easier to just give three electrons away. The atom will have the electron distribution of an atom with only ten electrons, like neon, again a noble gas. We say that the valency of aluminium is 3 because it gives 3 valence electrons away. I want to make sure that you understand the difference between valence electrons and valency. Have another look at the energy level diagram of oxygen. An oxygen atom is in group 6 on the periodic table and has 6 valence electrons. But we say it has a valency of 2 because it needs to gain 2 electrons to have a filled outer energy level. When oxygen gains electrons, it is no longer neutral, but forms an ion with a charge of minus 2. Let's put all of this information together in a table to look for a pattern. The group number of the elements is written in the first row, and the number of valence electrons and the valency are in the next rows. Do you remember what the group number tells us? Yes, the group number is the number of valence electrons. Let's start with the group 1 elements. They all have one valence electron, but these elements also have a valency of 1, because that is the number of electrons the atom needs to give away to have a full outer level. Group 2 has two valence electrons and a valency of 2. Group 3 has three valence electrons and a valency of 3. Group 4 has four valence electrons and a valency of 4. If we compare this to the periodic table, do you see that the metals on the left hand side of the periodic table, and because their numbers of valence electrons are only 1, 2 and 3, they normally give away their valence electrons to form positively charged ions. The valency of the elements changes as we move over to the non-metals on the right hand side of the periodic table. Non-metals have higher numbers of valence electrons and will therefore rather accept electrons to fill their outer energy levels. 
Group 5 has 5 valence electrons, but a valency of 3 because it needs 3 more electrons to fill the outer level. Group 6 has 6 valence electrons and a valency of 2. Group 7 has 7 valence electrons and a valency of 1. Group 8, the noble gases, has 8 valence electrons and 0 valency because they have a complete outer energy level. So do you see that metals will rather give away electrons and non-metals will rather take on electrons? Thank you, Diasha. We use these concepts in the other videos in this series. Check these out, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.